Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One video. Uh, but this one's not on a Wednesday, as I've been doing a lot of traveling for state conventions, and I thought it would take the opportunity, since I am home for a few days, to push out a new tutorial. Uh, this one's going to cover black and white conversion inside of Capture One. I know a lot of people use plugins for different black and white conversions, but I do not. I tend to do them all inside the software, and then create new styles or perhaps synchronize an entire set to a look. So when I publish it, they all kind of sing from the same hymnal. Today we're going to talk about use of some of the different tools in Capture One for converting to black and white and then adjusting it so that you can create something that really pops and is interesting, but also fits your style. What I have here is a picture of Haley, and if you followed along in my last tutorial, you see that we always create a layer to neutralize the image so that when we create a new style, we can put it on future images without it having to deal with the ramifications of this specific shoot. Now, because this was a hierarchy shoot, I'll turn this layer off so you can kind of see, this is what the image looked like, and it's already been put through Photoshop. I always do my post-production for colorization and color grading afterwards, because if I have to go back and change the color grading, the skin correction does not have to be redone, and that could be huge uh, if you were, have a picky client who wants to change something on you, you don't have to go back and do all that work. So I always tend to come back to Capture One to do my color grading and my black and white conversions. So in here, we have this neutralized layer. I'll, learn, I'll leave that on. If you think that everything's a bit bright, use the exposure evaluation tool inside of Capture One to see if you're using all of the memory in your camera properly. I'll probably do a separate video on exposure because I think a lot of people misunderstand how a camera records light and uh, how to best use it to minimize noise. So the first thing we want to do is look at the general image, and uh, this is kind of a retro look to it, and I enjoy that for this specific set. What I want to do, first of all, is change some of the exposure and high dynamic range settings inside of Capture One to work with the big, big changes. Uh, I'm not going to play with exposure so much, because exposure, once it's turned into a TIFF, does not work like it would when it's a RAW. It just doesn't seem to work the same way because it, it wouldn't. It's not manipulating the data the same way. It's working with the TIFF now instead of a RAW. Contrast, I find most people tend to go this way. I actually prefer to go this way. I find this softening, I think, works better for some of the directions I'm going to take it in a bit. Brightness is interesting because it works like the vibrance tool in Photoshop, meaning the brighter an area is, the less it's affected. The darker an area is, the more it's affected. So as we pull brightness down, you see the face doesn't change as quickly as the background does. So this is a very interesting tool for creating black and whites, as well as manipulating color images where you have areas you would like to keep bright, but darken the rest of the image. So the brightness tool is very handy and works much differently than the exposure tool, which pulls the entire image down equally. I'm just going to kind of fudge these in here a bit. Shadow adjustment, you know, how much shadow do we want to push in here? I'm not going to work with that one so much here. And white and black sliders just take the, the life out of the image to me. The black sliders are somewhat interesting, but the white image, this white slider I don't tend to use very much. The highlight slider is also cool because it can add additional punch back into an image. Because we're creating a black and white, I'm okay with this little punchiness. Before we continue much further, let's go and actually convert it to black and white using the enable black and white. Very simple. Capture one just throws black and white on there. Now we can use these sliders to adjust each of those individual colors to our liking. And that's just what I do. I just go through each, each one and I slide it, see if it does anything. If not, please recenter it because you never know. Later on you change something and all of a sudden that slider is doing something you didn't attend on and then hilarity ensues. So I'm just looking, this is the gloss on her lips more than anything else. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm looking for kind of a retro feel to this. And this looks fine. Let's go back and make any little subtle adjustments here before we move on to the big movements here. So again, this white tool, I just don't like this tool as much as I do some of the other ones for manipulating the image. It's the highlight tool versus the white tool. And there we go. So you can see what this, this contrast I think did is it, it softens up the image a bit and helps me get more detail into the shadow parts of this versus, say, introducing this slider here, which tends to bring up the entire image. Okay, that looks pretty decent to me, so let's go in here. Now, one of the other tools I like to use is the color balance tool. Now, the color balance tool, you're thinking, well, I don't want to introduce a color cast to my image. That's fine. You can still use this slider over here to influence your shadow, your midtone. And again, I just grab it and slide it around, and your highlight. 
I want to be careful not to clip this, but I don't mind coming close. So be careful not to clip here. Turn on your exposure warning if you need to. And I don't mind a little bit in the reflective parts of this because you are reflecting the light. The hair, eh, it's probably not the best solution in the world, but let's go change it. You can always pull your entire exposure down. I want to be careful not to underexpose my image, though. Nothing worse than having an image that is just muddy. Uh, so if you hold down your Alt key, you can move this in very small increments as you use your mouse. And then once we have this all set the way we like it, I like to go down and add clarity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to put it... Uh, now note that anything on this layer, by the way, is not going to translate to any style. So anything we've done in the background layer here, we could actually convert to a preset and then ultimately to a style so that we can go and multiply this times a bunch of different images. Anything we do on these other layers is simply going to apply to this image only. One of the things I love to do is to take B for brush and go in and highlight different areas of the uh, outfit. Usually anything that's not a nice texture to it that's not going to be too distracting. Turn off the exposure warning. And I did a pretty sloppy job. You hit M for mask uh, to bring that up anytime you like. And if you're done, you hit M again. Uh, I like to paint with it on just to kind of see what's going on. And I'm not going to, I don't want to get this clarity on her skin. That's just a terrible, terrible thing. So once I've got that happy, I come over here and I actually prefer classic sometimes for, for this type of thing. So it adds a little bit of punch. You don't want to get too much. Uh, if you want to do before and after, just alt and click on this icon here. And it'll show you before and after. And it looks good. And let's add another one. And the other thing I like to do is B for brush. Keep this under there. And go up into the hair. So I'm going to be a little sloppy here initially. I just kind of do this. Hit M for mask. E for eraser. Use your bracket keys like in Photoshop. I wish you could ad adjust the uh, size dynamic like you can in Photoshop. But, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers here. And then we just go through and make sure that it isn't touching the background and it isn't touching the face. Because either one of those two situations is going to create a halo around her head, uh, which will be very distracting and uh, just looks bad. Or it will be on her skin, which would also look bad. Hit M for mask. And then again, we can go in and play with clarity. So here I might try punch. The different clarities uh, have quite different characters to them. And you know what I think I'm going to do is go back here and add some of this to the crown up here. So this is that uh, hit B for brush and go up and add just a little bit of that previous texture here. M for mask, you can see we did, and we got a little sloppy there. Don't want to, again, hit the background. Just keep it right on her and not her skin and not the background. So a little bit of the crown, and then this one is uh, just her hair. Here. Yeah. Where's that one? Oh, it's mask. Okay, we haven't done anything with that yet. Punch. Um, maybe. Let's try classic. Classic adds kind of a crispiness to it. Uh, I don't like it in this case. Neutral. Make sure we're not clipping that too much. And then uh, I might try and bring up other areas. You can use clarity multiple times over the same area. So just be careful not to stack something too much. And I think I'm going to go here, hit B for brush, hit this necklace real quick. Again, small enough that it doesn't get on her skin. And there we go. So now we should have a nice, complete looking black and white using a few different layers. But again, the core amount of our work is done in the background layer here. So that if we wanted to go and create a preset for this, uh, for any of these controls or a style, which would be... Uh, applicable to anything we wanted to be, or we could even bundle it and sell it. Remember that black and white conversions can only be done on the background layer inside of Capture One. So if you plan to create a style from this, make sure your black and white conversion is done on the background layer and not in one of these other layers. Uh, so again, layer one up top here is my, uh, my base layer. That's the one that adjusts the exposure from what I had originally shot down to where I wanted to begin working on my black and white. And then everything else was done here on the black and white. Uh, background layer.
So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, basically this is my entire workflow for creating black and whites inside of Capture One. And then I will always keep the variant of the color as well. So that if I need to go back and look at the color version or possibly publish both, I have both of them. I do not replace my color ones with black and white ones uh, because you never know what you might want later. And destroying it is just a, a poor option in my mind. So let me know if you have any questions or comments and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As I say, I'm traveling a bunch coming up here pretty soon and I hope to catch you out and about. I'll see you soon.